good morning uh, data science learners uh, uh, in today's video we will be uh, learning about something called change data capture uh, a very good concept on uh, data engineering uh, where uh, we have some uh, uh, use cases where the source data changes in real time and uh, you need to capture those changes uh, at uh, at a sync or the downstream systems so for that this is uh, what uh, you are seeing on the screen is the big picture so if you have uh, n number of applications example say like uh, application 1 2 3 and then they are writing the data into some kind of a data source could be relational or non relational data sources like mongodb and all but uh, in today's scenario i'll be considering a relational database uh, for which i like i'll be using uh, postgres database okay so if you have a pg database and then uh, there is a data ingestion happening uh, from uh, many applications and now uh, as soon as the data getting uh, either inserted deleted or updated so these are the three different uh, change data that can happen over a particular given database right so any of this operation is done on this uh, source system that emits a uh, event and uh, we use the kafka connect as one of the component this kafka connect basically monitors the change that is happening on the source and finally emits that particular uh, uh, change as a uh, uh, the change data into one of the topics uh, that is that we have uh, configured and finally that can be read by our downstream applications or you can configure your streaming application to monitor that particular topic and then we can uh, have some kind of real time dashboards or uh, or uh, real time streaming uh, uh, into data uh, data like uh, kind of things or okay at the same time uh, kafka has also got uh, something called a uh, uh, sync capability basically kafka when i mention it here which is, uh, i am referring to a component of kafka which is called kafka connect so kafka connect has got two different uh, aspects kafka connect source and kafka connect sync so whatever the uh, so uh, changes that are being observed at a source system we call it as kafka connect source configuration and uh, once uh, you just need to do uh, some kind of a dumping as soon as there is a change inside uh, the source system we call it as kafka connect sync so you can establish that sync to uh, similar kind of things like you can configure that to a non relational database relational database or even uh, uh, data warehouse kind of things so uh, that's all a uh, big picture but uh, in today's tutorial what we are going to see is assume that uh, there are application i'm not going to concentrate on uh, writing an application which will connect to a database and push the data into it but we'll assume that there are applications which are pushing the data into uh, relational db and we will configure a kafka connect uh, between our source database and we will establish between uh, the kafka and uh, this kafka eventually the kafka connect whenever it identifies as a source system change it will push the data into a topic and we will configure uh, a minimalistic spark streaming uh, without much uh, uh, details in it so uh, what we'll do is we'll identify that change inside the topic and we'll just pull that uh, data so we'll not be doing much data aggregations or uh, data uh, pre-processing or cleaning but we'll identify that and we'll pull that data so once uh, the data is uh, uh, pulled onto the kafka uh, i'm sorry uh, spark uh, so uh, we'll stream uh, basically and then we'll output the amount to the console eventually you can push that uh, streamed data using some filters like we can group by uh, we'll filter out the streaming data and then finally you can push it into some uh, uh, real-time uh, uh, visualization systems like azure synapse or some 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 kind of things and then finally you can visualize that data in real time so as soon as there is a data change at a source your visualization dashboard also changes accordingly so that that quick it would be so you will get a, a, a millisecond latency and then finally uh, you get the output inside of a visualizations so basically uh, what you need to understand in this whole uh, architecture is basically cdc uh, which is like change data capture is a very critical component of uh, uh, many uh, modern data architectures and plays a very crucial role in uh, 
uh, real time data integrations um, and data warehousing and business intelligences and uh, even uh, the cdc can help uh, the business gain uh, more and more accurate and up to date view of the data the, uh, data changes that are happening at the back end so this is the most important part of it okay with this uh, introduction what we'll do is uh, uh, i'll try to show you something i already start my kafka cluster i'm using a confluent platform kafka uh, uh, cluster here uh, which is a single node cluster okay uh, you can follow uh, one of the blog link that I have given uh, inside the description of this particular video to how to install this Confluent Kafka platform uh, in your local machine. Okay, so we'll see the cluster status. So for which like you need to uh, uh, yeah um, uh, run this particular command, which is the schema registry is down. What we'll do is uh, sta uh, we'll start the calf, um Confluent Kafka again, uh, which will start that schema registry. We'll see the status, but still it is down. Okay, let me rerun it again, and then uh, yeah, now it is uh, up and running. So what we'll do is now uh, let's uh, check the uh, health of the uh, cluster. So we'll, we'll we should say like because the Confluent Kafka uh, control center would be running on. Uh, uh, localhost 9021 so i'll just sub, uh, 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 make this up and running so you should see some something very similar to this so you should have unhealthy clusters as zero and healthy clusters as one so which means like everything is up and running without any errors or issues okay so just uh, click on this cluster have two things here so you have connect and topics so you just go to uh, connect so where we are actually establishing a kafka connect to our source system now uh, so you just need to uh, add a connector. I've installed a lot of connectors. So I've experimented with Mongo connectors, uh, source connectors, sync connectors. That's what I was telling, right? So when you talk about connectors, there are two different aspects of connectors. So you have source connectors as well as sync connectors. So I've experimented with JDBC connectors, Mongo connectors, and uh, yeah, especially uh, Postgres connector, which is a special kind of a connector, which is developed by Debezium. Uh, so how to install this connector this is an entirely a different topic but uh, for your information on a single note i can tell you uh, go to confluent connector hub and then search for your required connector and you can install it okay so now uh, i have my configuration file written separately inside uh, json file so i'll upload that and then i uh, will see uh, how that looks like and whatever I have written in that configuration would pre-populate in this uh, text file otherwise what you have to do is uh, you have to manually fill all these things okay uh, basically we are using uh, the key converters and value converters as a uh, storage string converters that means like every key values that comes from our source that comes as a strings okay there are a lot of uh, uh, converters available on uh, kafka like string converters which you are seeing and then json converters and then avro converters and then protobuf converters so you should know like uh, uh, what converter need to be used at what scenarios otherwise like we'll be running into some issues of deserialization versus serialization when messages get transferred into kafka from a source system or from a kafka to one downstream system you will encounter these kind of conversion issues if we are not maintaining this converter classes uh, properly okay uh, just keep this in mind and this is a uh, um, emphasized note okay and then uh, error handling when uh, you are retrying uh, 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 if there is any error like uh, how much time delay we need to give for kafka root kafka to retry them again and whether uh, you want to log these errors details or not so everything i've just given and here is my postgres uh, database uh, configuration where to connect because i'm running everything on my local so my database is also in local so i'm just uh, i've just given that okay and uh, finally um uh, finally i have my some additional properties like what is my schema registry url uh, which is running on the local and then what is the key converters and uh, 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 internal key converters and uh, value converters this also can be like uh, uh, what you can say uh, 
uh, string converters because these are actually going into the schema registry so this schema registry internally uses internal key converters basically my schema would work on json structures internally that's how the, these are configured okay i'll post uh, the whole configuration inside that blog post and then you can go through it and if you have still any questions you can uh, post a question uh, in the disc uh, in the comment section of this video or even you can ask that inside the blog and then uh, uh, we can uh, we can answer those questions the particular questions in detail okay since we have this converter let's see now i will say next and this is the whole uh, configuration that it looks like and you can download and save this configuration for your later purpose uses okay launch and uh, uh, just wait for a couple of seconds your connector should be connecting to your source and it should be in running status okay now uh, let me open my database um, I, I already said right so inside the architecture uh, we assume that there are few systems which are writing the data to your data uh, database okay uh, so for our convenience what we'll say is uh, I have some uh, online food delivery we are developing some application so I'll use the same uh, database for uh, for our uh, purpose uh, uh, this video purpose now so I'll show you that there is no data available here okay so I have written some scripts to enter dum some dummy data and then we'll see how that would look like okay so I'll take this I'll, I'll try to show two things uh, um, one the data getting ingested into Kafka and the same time uh, your data is being uh, pulled from Kafka and then uh, and then um, uh, streamed into the uh, 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 Spark streaming, uh, uh, PySpark streaming console. Okay, both I'll try to show simultaneously. So let me um, um, pull out your uh, PySpark also. So this is my Spark uh, uh, application. So this is the schema structure that is there. But as I said, like I am not uh, attaching this schema to the uh, streaming yet. Uh, we are doing a minimal thing. So here is the uh, streaming config. So you are connecting your uh, uh, Kafka bootstrap servers to the server config and then topic. And uh, we are casting your key and value as string and finally selecting the key value and then streaming on to the console. Okay, you can stream this to a file or stream this, this to as I said like to some other cloud sources like Synapse Analytics or uh, data warehouses okay so here we will issue a command called spark submit and then we will submit this particular job and it will it will run continuously and it will await the termination so until and unless like you explicitly terminate the job won't get terminated and it keeps on listening for the changes uh, so now let me run okay so let us see what happens okay so it's run and then it is actually waiting for the data and uh, what i'll do is uh, i'll minima okay uh, i'll try to uh, push the data now and let us see what happens okay now if you see i push the data immediately the batch job micro batches because streaming works on micro batches in the back end so your micro batch ran and you have the data if you see this struct and all so this is basically a schema for this so you are getting some data so you need to just pre-process and get the value out of it but your kafka uh, streaming job identified that there is some data available in the topic now let us visualize uh, the data how it is available inside your uh, uh, uh what do you say um, in in kafka topic okay so if you go to the control center back again and the topic you can see there is a topic created for you which is called db dot public uh, um, public food uh, topic and this topic is being created because you gave that inside the configuration just go through the configuration you will find that okay and now if you just go into the uh, messages uh, and then uh, you need to say uh, from uh, from which partition you want to see the data so this is how the data would appear um, and then this is on uh, structs and all so the latest is id 10 because i pushed 10 different data 10 data uh, 10 rows of data and you are seeing 10 here okay i can even push more data and you can see that uh, so let us see the streaming console which is my data spell okay uh, let me try to push uh, some more data 
uh, and then uh, let's see what happens in both Kafka as well as uh, streaming okay so I'm putting uh, I'm pushing the next set of data I just pushed it okay now if you see batch 2 is executed and it has got the data uh, similarly let me pull out my confluent platform again um, and then uh, show you control center yeah now if you see uh, the latest struct id is 20 that means like 20 uh, data 20 rows of data has been pushed and these 10 set the next 10 set is the most recent data that's the reason you are uh, 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 streaming is able to pull up the next only next 10 set of data it is not uh, pulling the whole set of the data okay so this is uh, um, uh, and the reason for that is we are using the output mode as update so when you say output mode as complete so you will get the complete data but when you say output mode as update only the updated data would be identified and then it will be fetching that particular data not the entire whole set of the data that is available inside inside the source or the topic okay so basically uh, this is how uh, the end to end uh, um, um, what do you say the CDC pipeline would work so uh, to conclude uh, I would like to say this CDC pipelines have got lot learned lots of uh, use cases example uh, recent days uh, hotstar on a live stream they have captured 5 million emojis um, uh, over a cricket match streaming okay so uh, for those kind of things like what are the most efficient uh, 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 used emojis what are the most used emojis um, and all the emojis uh, that irrespective of uh, grouping uh, so if you want to stream and then collect them uh, maybe these kind of uh, pipeline and then architectures would be beneficial for us because you want to see in real time as soon as there is an emoji getting posted on uh, onto the platform that is hotstar okay so, so those kind of things are uh, you can actually practically implement it here and uh, just to an extension if you can put this Kafka over AWS or Azure uh, taking the Kafka clusters and then uh, Spark uh, also you put it into some Azure Databricks or AWS Databricks and then connect these both of the things then you can assume the scale like I can vertically scale my Kafka clusters as well as my um, uh, Databricks cluster. Uh, which internally runs this spark streaming jobs and then both can connect together and then you can visualize you can now imagine how how best my architecture can work but whatever i have demonstrated everything is in local uh, and then you can get the whole content in the uh, blog description uh, that i will be posting okay uh, please support us share like uh, and then subscribe uh, thank you and we'll come up with uh, some other new videos on spark and all